Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned. This is going to be the fifth episode, building out our API for our application in Rails. We have a lot to cover in this episode, so I'm not going to spend too much time chit-chatting about it, but basically we want to build a way to access a resource using our JWT and getting a response. So let's go ahead and start diving right into it. Uh, the end result here, we are running a ping request. It's going to run a few tests, and they're all going to pass. Let's go ahead and look at what we got going on. So the first thing first, we're going to go ahead and add our spec Rails. We need to add a few extra libraries. I needed to add these, um, at least the DirectXML one, uh, more recently due to Rails 6. This may or may not be the case for you now. I've also added parallel tests and the .env that we need uh, to run the RJWT stuff that we're accessing later on. Um, so if I install those, and then also down here under the test group, um, Capybara, Selenium, et cetera, et cetera, I'm not using those at the moment. Um, I'm going to show you simple cov in just a moment, and we're using the database cleaner that will run and clear out the database between each of our tests. That'll be a more long run thing. So we're just going to kind of jump through. I have a lot of files to cover, so I may bounce a little bit, um, but kind of bear with me. Here we go. So the first thing is we have this device for that we're adding into our routes. If you're unfamiliar with device, then you should read up on it, first of all. Otherwise, the main thing to know is that we are overriding each of these controllers, the confirmations, passwords, registration, and sessions controllers. We'll take a look at each of them in turn, uh, we're not going to use all of them today, uh, but we will be using the session one for sure to log in. Uh, but they're going to be there just so you can see them. We also have a new resources block here with a ping controller. It's going to have an index action as well as an auth action. In our application controller here, we're going to go ahead and configure our permitted parameters if it's a device controller which are going to be on sign in. It's gonna be just the email key for now, as well as sign up email key. And we're also gonna have a current token, um, easy access to get to the Warden JWT auth token. Let's go ahead and take a look at this ping controller. It's gonna have the authentic authenticate user before action only on the auth. So that's a way for us to check uh, against ping auth. And we're just gonna return a 200, as well as the ping here. Here is what our tests look like, our spec. So if you make a request on ping, which will just be this, there's no authentication required and it should have a 200. So that's a very, very simple test. And then if we're gonna go ahead and ping auth without being logged in, it should have a 401, which is an unauthorized request. And if we're gonna go ahead and log in, so we're gonna create a user, and we're gonna add the proper header which is going to, we'll show you what that is in just a moment, that should have a 200. And that header is going to be providing the JWT to show that we are authenticated. So over here in our Rails helper, this is in our spec Rails helper. This is basically setting up what we need for our spec, um, loading in the specific support files, uh, fixtures if you need them, and how we're going to use database cleaner. Our spec helper here is setting up simple cov, which is, again, I said I'll cover momentarily. Um, we have some filters for things that we I don't care about covering at the moment, and then I'm grouping out um, what we're going to end up wanting to have specs on. And um, down below, it's just going to have the rest of the regular spec helper information that we would normally have. Within spec support that I am loading in, this is where I have a couple of object creators. I have one to create an allow listed JWT for a given user, as well as a way to create a user. And we're going to be skipping confirmation, etc. Here's the convenience method I mentioned before. So we have get headers. If we go back to this request, you'll see the get headers for this email, user's email. So that's that login. It's going to call get JWT for that login and then return this uh, block, which will be the headers that are required. 
So the main thing to know is we have application JSON here, as well as HTTP JWT AUD. We're just going to set it to test. And note that this is kind of a weird thing that I've figured out with uh, RSpec, which is it precursors these headers with HTTP underscore. And as you recall in our device, if I open that real quick, and I scroll to the bottom here, you can see it's just JWT AD. Um, I'm not sure why it was precursing it in RSpec only. So that's why we have this specifically defined here. So what this is doing, get JWT, is it's making a post request to this user's sign-in, um, given that login and some password, and then the headers, which is the uh, JWT here. And then it's going to return the response body from that. So this is where we have that device route defined. Let's go all the way back here to our routes. And that'll end up going to the session. So sessions is going to be the one that creates the login. So this is basically logging a user in and getting the JWT back from that login and sending it so that way we can pass along this authorization bearer JWT with requests whenever we're doing anything in our specs. So we can always go ahead and use this over and over again, given a user, and it'll have the proper JWT provided. I'm going to close a few of these out because they're unnecessary. So I'm not going to cover each of these in detail at the moment. The main thing to know is we have to override all of these because date device out of the box does not provide JWT support and JavaScript only support. So since we want to provide JSON and we're not providing entire HTML responses, we want to override all of these controllers with actions that will provide uh, strictly JSON. So basically a lot of these look very, very similar to the device conf confirmation controller, password controller, et cetera, um, but we're just changing where we're rendering and what we're actually rendering. Um, so this is the one for uh, confirming users, which we'll use a, a later date. Uh, the password one, so this is going ahead and updating the password successfully and sending password instructions um, and signing in responsibly. Uh, we have this resource for display. I'll show that that's on the user object momentarily. And the current token, which is the request end thing as well. Since this is under the device, um, we went ahead and overrode this here as well as the application RV or, or application controller. And then respond with resources is just returning the errors for that resource. Registration controller is basically creating a user. So it's very simple. We're going to build it up based off the parameters that are provided. And if it persists, go ahead and re uh, respond appropriately. And then finally, session. This is the one we're using at the moment. So this is where I have, again, that hack where we have the possible AUD from the HTTP JWT versus the JWT. It's kind of annoying, but it's the way it is. Um, you could probably figure out what's going on here, but it was a lot easier just to do this uh, small hack at the moment to get around our spec doing whatever it was doing. We're going to go ahead and log in our, our resource. And then what we're going to do is check the last a, uh, allowed list JWT for this um, AUD and make sure we update the initial uh, browser information. Again, this is very similar to what I did on the allow list concern on the user, but this allows me to set the basically the initial login of what it is. And then we're going to go ahead and respond with the resource as well as the AUD, and that will be um, provided to the end user uh, so that we have the token, the JWT token, as well as the AUD uh, for subsequent requests. Again, we'll take a look at this for display here too. All of these are also these internationalizations. I also like to do everything I can that's a string in my Ian YAML. I don't do a lot of internationalization at th this moment, but it's better to go ahead and have them there ahead of time. And then later on, you don't have to worry about making so many changes. So the only thing here is for display. Uh, this will expand out later on. We'll have username and other information that we may want to provide, such as theming. Um, but for now, it's just going to be email and ID.
the E and YAML is pretty sp- uh, small right now. I'm going to have um, a few for a- APIs as well as the gener- generic controllers. These are all just strings that you can uh, customize at your will. So um, another thing to note here is we have this .env, which again, if we go back and look at our device here, we have this um, secret token. If you don't have this set, it will fail. The other thing to note is I added this warden failure application to the device custom failure. And if you fail to log in, again, device will just automatically respond with uh, HTML as opposed to JSON. Um, You can ignore all of this for the moment, but basically we want to have this HTTP auth call, and then this is the body so that we return JSON. If there's an authorization failure, um, this is basically what we need to be returning to make sure that works. So that's really it. It's I covered a lot in this, and I went really fast. Um, I would really highly uh, encourage you to look at the source code, uh, explore it, take a look, change some things. Um, there's a lot going on, even though it's in the end, it's very simple, which is really nice. This will allow us to make super, super simple requests against guarded uh, and controlled areas within our application, which as you know, within any application, you want to make sure that it may have an authenticated user. Uh, we will be covering authorization with Pundit in a future episode. Uh, so once you are authenticated, if you need or want access to a specific resource, uh, we'll work on that in a later episode. But for now, uh, this is what we got. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, Subscribe and like if you can, and uh, I will see you next time. Thanks.